Hello and welcome back to the show and what is one of two specials to mark International Women's Day. Now we were lucky enough during the week to catch up and do a short interview with Kate Tyrrell. She has founded Charge Safe after a number of years working in the EV industry. Look, that's enough from us. I think it's time to jump straight into it with Kate. So as we said, we've got Kate Tyrrell, the co-founder of ChargeSafe, coming on with us today to mark International Women's Day. Kate, yeah. so we've got a couple of questions lined up, and thank you so much for your time today. I know you have lots going on, just back from Farnborough with Fully Charged, the briefing going on, and lots of stuff going on. But could you tell us a little bit about yourself, about ChargeSafe, and people who, maybe for somebody who's never heard about it? Okay, so uh, myself, I've been driving an EV for a year and a half now. Um, I've had the pleasure of driving up and down the country and using um, both domestic and on route charges. So domestic being the small at home can charge whilst I sleep to 100% nice and easy. But when you are driving up and down the country, uh, quite often you need to stop to charge somewhere along the line. So I've been using a lot of public charges. And what I've found with those public charges is quite often I've been in, in quite a tricky situation where it could be, you know, almost midnight. I'm sat at a, at a public charger. Quite often they're at the very back, uh, very dark end of a, a car park. No humans around. It feels quite unsafe. Uh, and as a result, I decided to try and improve it because there's a huge gap in the market for actually looking after the, the safety of women and men. But, you know because I'm a, a woman, I'm slightly biased, uh, and, and just taking care of the safety side of things. And then we very quickly realised that this also needs to involve the accessibility element too, because there's not much being done around, you know, how easy is it to get a wheelchair in front of a, a charger and connect a cable into the car. Um, so for anybody who doesn't drive an electric vehicle, it might all sound a complete gobbledygook at the moment. Um, but I'm sure at some point you will get to test drive something or even the next time you're at a service station, if you see a charger, just take a quick look and um, have a look at the lighting in the area. And, and hopefully you'll you'll understand where we're coming from. And then just to, to talk in a little bit more detail about charge safe. So what what are the goals or, or at this early stage and having set it up? You know, what are your what are your daily tasks or, or what are the challenges ahead for you in the next few weeks and next few months? Lots of challenges ahead. So uh, the overall aim is safety and accessibility for all. Um, we want to be a completely independent third party uh, safety assessment business for all charge point networks. So we're very passionate about not receiving any advertisement, sponsorship, partnership revenue from any of the charge point network operators. So, um, you know, we, we can go out and, and completely inspect every single charge point in the UK without being biased in any in any way, shape or form. So what we're going to do is physically inspect every single charge point in the UK. Now, that in itself is a huge huge task. Uh, 29,000 units across almost 17,000 locations today in England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. So definitely got my work cut out for me. Um, but it is about everyone. So we can't really miss one at all. Uh, this means that my, my current challenges are getting funding in for the business so that we can actually go out and start employing a nationwide team of inspectors to deliver the service. We are currently developing the tech uh, the tech platform so that we can put our inspector ratings through a really simple web page form and then translate that into nice, easy, usable data for the networks to be able to have a visual on where they're falling down with safety and accessibility, but also what they're doing really well. Is it location specific? Is there a trend in that, you know, they could be buying um, really poor light bulbs that are going out every five minutes that, you know, they could very well have the lighting there, but it's just failing. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go out and collect all this information. We're gonna make it accessible for the networks. Uh, they will need to subscribe to us in order to access the more in-depth information. Uh, so that's how we're going to, you know, use deliver the service is we do need to get money in to deliver the service. But then we're going to share all of the scores with all of the mapping applications. So Zapmap, WhatsApp, Electric Juice, uh, Better Route Planner. We've got lots of conversations left to have with some of these mapping applications. So if you know of anyone, do send them my way. I would love to talk to them. 
And then what will happen is if you're mapping out your, your journey, so typically for an EV driver, that means checking what charges are along the way to your destination. You should have a, a good idea of who the network is, how many charge points are at a specific location. That's information that's already available to us. Thank you to all of the mapping providers who already do that. But then there should also be a charge safe score, which will be out of five stars and give you a good indication as to how safe that that charge point location has been deemed, but also what the accessibility looks like for that charge point. So some people safety isn't going to be a priority, especially if it's the middle of the day, it's a nice summer's day, it's beautiful sunshine everywhere. You don't need to worry about the lighting, especially if it's in a supermarket car park during opening hours, it's not really a priority then. But for other people, if it is 2 a.m. And, and they're caught out on a long trip, um, being able to see that there's charge point A 10 miles away and charge point B eight miles away, but one has a score of 4.7 and the other score 2.3, they can make a more informed decision about where they're then going to charge um, based on the information that we collect. So yes, there's a lot of work to be getting on with in the coming weeks, months, years, uh, but I'm, I'm very ambitious and I'm very positive that we're going to achieve all of this. Speaking of years to come, Kate, and we wave a magic wand and it's 2032. 10 years time mm -hmm. uh, where, where would you like charge safe to be and what, what what has happened along that journey so charge safe is something that from the very offset we recognize is going to need to evolve uh, with the times because of the the way that the inspections will start is enabling those network operators to improve all the legacy charges that have been in since day one. So at the moment, as I say, there's 29,000 units across the UK. We can inspect all of those units and, and show them, you know, where the error of their ways and what they need to improve on. And that also provides a guide as to what they can do for future installs. So 2032 in 10 years time, those networks will be well versed in what we're looking for in terms of safety and accessibility. And they won't need to, to have these inspections to understand where their rating falls, though we will commit to re-inspect every unit once per quarter moving forward. Things do change, units could be vandalized, um, things could become faulty, uh, there could be technical difficulties, all of these things. So we'll be able to keep up to date with what's happening real time uh, and, and notify the networks of any major changes that need to be looked at. But in 10 years time, it will become very much a case of an annual membership. So the charge safe score, we would like to become an accreditation. So the networks could say, you know, we are a charge safe accredited network and therefore they'll be paying an annual membership for us to just spot check um, whilst reporting back the, the real time data but just to ensure that they are up to the standard that they need to be in order to to be an accredited network with us so it'll be an ongoing safety standard rather than a, a inspection just to to check in okay excellent and as you know like an ev platform here we're we're not just about cars you know we're trying to get involved in different types of transport and all those other ancillary activities that take place around the electrification of transport so charge safety you know safety of charges we've spoken about a lot about so far are there any other parts um of this industry that you'd like to see changing you know as we move towards the electrification of transport Oh, that's a good question. Anything I'd like to see changed? Um, I think just just the way that we talk about charging. So mm -hmm. at dealership level, you know, when you when you first go to buy a car, I would love for those dealerships to be better informed on the realities of driving electric. I feel like there could be a situation currently um, in in that area whereby the salesman could be just trying to get rid of the last diesel and petrol cars and as a result aren't having really good quality conversations around electrification. Uh, hybrids, I, I would love to see the death of hybrids. Um, you know, that they're not they're not good for the environment. It's it's great that hybrids have served a purpose in being a comfortable stepping stone for people who weren't sure about taking that leap into driving a full uh, battery electric vehicle. 
great but um yeah i would love to see the death of hybrids and dealerships better informed and also there's this cross skilling piece that's going to come into it as well so you know what what will mechanics do in in future we need to make sure that there's a, a huge educational piece going into uh, today's mechanics to ensure that they're not going to be forgotten about in 10 years time because yes they will still need those skills to maintain the current um, ice vehicles that are still on the road, but also to to adapt to understanding how electric vehicles work and how they can be maintained and what servicing requirements they have, etc. As we don't really have MOTs now for EVs, but you know what's going to happen in the next ten years? How will they apply themselves to that? So it really is just about ensuring that there's less fud in in the industry so fear uncertainty doubt it's still going on in the press right now how do we ensure that the people responsible for selling the cars are having the right conversations and how do we ensure that the people responsible for mending the cars are, are, are best equipped to do so thank you kate and um, before we sign off what's in your driveway or your dream ev driveway i'm not asking what your car is now but if you were to win the lottery or a price wasn't an issue what would you be would it be an e-moped would it be uh, something for going around town would it be uh, something bigger for those longer drives we'd love to hear what you what your dream cars are or vehicles several several <laughs> um so i would really love i don't actually have a motorbike license but a live wire would be sick i would love a live wire like that's that's pretty cool isn't it harley davidson well done mm. jump on that and recently i'm actually in a bit of a a flux over the x or the y so what's what's really the difference between the x and the y they're both big they both look super cool um for me the aspiration is to have a, a beefy old tesla on the driveway i do really like the roadster as well the one that hasn't actually made it to manufacturing in the uk yet it's mm -hmm. not here but a convertible tesla that's super fast and very sexy would be amazing yes please i would drive that around at the weekends um an x or y for the the normal trips i really am fond of the cute little face on the hondery um <laughs> and I, I do i do quite like that but um i don't know i used to have a mini and i got to drive an electric mini very recently and it felt so familiar to me it, it did feel a little bit gritty in the way that you know you, you use the mini um but just smoother because it's electric so yeah honda or mini an x or a y definitely a live wire definitely a roadster i need to win the lottery or charge safe just needs to become a global success yeah. but you're gonna need a big driveway for all those cars <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, I have to say, as we read things off now, thank you very much for coming on today. It's great just to learn a little bit more about Charge Safe and have that conversation to mark uh, International Women's Day today when the video has been released anyway. So really, thank you very, very much for your time. And I hope everybody watching this uh, goes, looks up Charge Safe and that we all can have a, a good think about safety at chargers, accessibility at chargers and all those surrounding uh, thoughts. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. It's a big honour to be asked to speak on International Women's Day. So, you know, I, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Kate. Again, we really love the initiative of Charge Safe. If you're interested in finding out more, there'll be a link in the description. If you're enjoying our interviews, make sure you've clicked like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments where you're based. This has been EB Platform. Thank you very much for watching.